All right, so this is going to be about gas lines inside of houses, inside of buildings, and what is actually, um, as far as pressure, inside those lines, inside the piping, inside the, the natural gas or propane gas or whatever gas you have, what is actually going on inside there, because uh, there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of myths out in the world about gas piping that's inside your house one of the biggest things is people have this idea that the gas is under like super high pressure and that the slightest leak is going to lead to an imminent imminent disaster and um, you might be surprised at how low the, the gas pressure is inside of a, a gas line that's inside of a house it's extremely small um, so what I'm going to do here is this is the bottom, what they call the drip leg of a, uh, a gas line that's feeding to an appliance, which in this case is a boiler. Uh, the, the gas comes down here. There's a T fitting right here. And then it goes into the gas valve inside the boiler. And there's this just this dead leg that's at the bottom of the T. The idea, original purpose of these, back in the old days, before you know, especially in the coal gas days when they made gas out of out of coal, there was a lot of contamination that was inside the gas pipes. It was either solids or liquids that would collect in these drip drip legs, and you didn't want that going into the valve because it could cause the valve to stick, you know, stick open, and that's obviously a, not a good thing. So. <clears throat> The gas, natural gas, in, at least in the United States, in a uh, residential environment, <clears throat> runs at about one quarter of a pound per square inch. Or another way to put it, it's seven inches of water column. So what that means is that if you were to have a tube filled with water and you were to put the gas pressure on the bottom of the tube, it would push the water up seven inches from it started the uh, that's not a lot of pressure you could actually create more pressure by blowing out of your mouth than what that is seven inches water column is very low pressure but it's more than enough to run the gas burners in a typical set of appliances that you have in your house so the advantage of having such low pressure is that small leaks in these pipe in this piping whether it be this you know a union fitting like this or threaded joints or something like that small leaks don't result in huge quantities of gas being released into the into the building so the low pressure is good um, typically in the street out in the front of your you know in the street they're running like something between like 10 and 100 pounds per square inch, a lot higher pressure. They have to have the higher pressure to be able to push enough gas through the lines to get feed all the customers on the street. But then there's a regulator at your gas meter that drops the pressure down to a quarter pound or seven inches water column. So we're gonna open this, open this baby up and I'm gonna turn the valve on, which is up here. And uh, we're gonna hear the gas coming out Pretty much eliminated all ignition sources in this room so we're not going to have a fire but the one thing we have to remember with every flammable substance is that it has a lower explosive limit and an upper explosive limit those are the concentrations of the gas that are required to be mixed with air in order to have a, a combustion have a fire and with natural gas it's mostly methane so methane, I believe, is like between 5 and 15 percent or it's between either 5 or 7, I don't recall exactly, and 15 percent. It's not it's a pretty narrow window of concentrations that methane can burn. If it's less than that 5 percent or whatever it might be, the mixture cannot ignite. If it's greater than 15 percent or whatever the upper explosive limit is, the mixture will not ignite. You have to be within that exact concentration to have a, an ignition of the mixture of air and gas. I'm going to 
pop this lid off of here. not really anything in there you can smell it it kind of smells like the odorant that they put in the natural gas so natural gas is naturally odorless the smell that it has is an artificial chemical often called mercaptan that they add to the gas to make it so you can smell it otherwise people can't smell it so if you have a leak then nobody's going to know it because they can't smell it so they add the stuff to the gas so you can detect it and the end of that cap has that odor to it. So there's the end, it's open. I'm gonna turn the valve on, you're gonna hear it. And I'm putting my hand on there and stopping the leak. Whew, it stinks. So just my hand right here prevents all the natural gas from coming out of the pipe. Hold this closer. So really there's not a whole lot of um, pressure there at all. Put my thumb on it. Nothing is coming out. All right. And by the way, natural gas, methane, is not toxic to people. So the, the only health hazard of this, besides being flammable, is that if it displaces oxygen in the air it uh, obviously you can't breathe without oxygen but I think you have bigger problems before that happens but the back in the old days when they used to make the gas out of coal this gas contained a large amount of carbon monoxide which is pretty pretty bad pretty unhealthy so carbon monoxide containing gas that was made out of coal was actually toxic that if somebody were to open up a gas pipe or a gas burner without burning the gas in the building it would it could cause death natural gas is not that way it not only does it stink so bad you can barely stand it but it's not toxic in the slightest bit so we got this plastic bag here i'm going to inflate the bag with the natural gas Valve off for a minute. Open the bag up. Let's see this better. Okay. All right, put that right there. Feel that. Okay, it's pretty much purged of air. So open this. You can see it's nice and inflated. What is that? Alright, we have a bag of methane right there. It's not leaking. Let me smell it. So that's it. Now methane is actually lighter than air. Um, now this isn't floating like a helium balloon, but if we had a big enough balloon and we filled it with uh, natural gas, it would actually be buoyant in the atmosphere and it would float. Uh, I think methane is like 60% uh, as dense as air, something like that. So it's it's okay, but it's not like helium where it's really, really less dense than air. Helium's like 10% the density of air or something very small. Um, so I'm going to throw the cap back on. Um, and then we're going to try to do a demo with the 
combustion of the methane. Let's see what happens. Eight one there. Now we have a flame right here, a very small one. Let's see if we can look at that. Woo! See the candle flame right there? Hit the bag. See the methane burning? The problem is I got some air in there now. You got air mixed with it. You can even see it coming out of the bag. A little bit of gas left in there. Oh, smoke alarm's going off. So we know our smoke alarms work. And that's actually because the plastic. Plastic melted right here. But all that gas, you see that I had an open flame. I was able to burn that. And the key to that is that there was no air in the bag. So, unless there's air mixed with the gas in the right proportion, you're not going to have the bag just spontaneously blow up. Um, and the building is the same way. So when we have these stories on the news about a, a house exploding because there was a gas leak, it's because there was gas leaking into the house for a long period of time. And the um, concentration got to such where air, oxygen, was mixed with the gas in the right amount between 5 and 15%. And then there was an ignition source, a spark or a flame that caused that to, to ignite. Um, so when those things happen, you have to have a perfect environment it doesn't just happen because somebody left the stove on for 10 minutes. You know, it's got to be going for a long time. There's got to be a significant leak. And um, you, I mean, this whole room stinks like crazy right now, but there's not a ignition concentration of gas in here and not nowhere close. So that's why I have no problem doing this experiment in the house. It's not the amount of fuel that was in this bag is insignificant of an issue so that's natural gas so something to be respected for sure but something to be afraid of by no means nothing to be afraid of millions and millions and millions of people use it every single day so that's that